this is what fellowship should look like. Amen. Yes. Sometimes, yes. I have to cry sometimes. So much trouble, 
so much trouble in my way, I have to cry sometimes. Yes. And then it goes on to say, I will lay awake at night. Yes. I lay awake at night, but that's all that's right. That's all right. Jesus will fix it after a while. Yes. Amen. That lets us know that there is hope. Hope. No matter who you are, what you're going through, your hope is in God. He is in control. Amen. Amen. He's in control of the testimony. He's in control of what he put in your spirit. He's in control of visions that will come to pass. Matter of fact, they're already in the making. Amen. He will uh, uh, take control. He will make you a better person through life circumstances. Yes. Now to lift this this thought of hope. Now, uh, four points I want to raise in the text today. Verse 21, this I recall to mind, therefore I have hope. The first thing I want you to see is if remembrance of God yes. brings hope. Yes. Remembrance of God brings hope. Yes. Now the pastor could not have shared what he did if he had not Pause to remember God. Yes. We all have history. We all have a relationship with God. Amen. So when you face a situation where you're praying for a building, you're praying for income to, to sustain the ministry, the pastor in his testimony uh, shared his remembrance of God. My God. Keeps on bringing him hope. Yes. Suddenly, the man that was hedged in and chained in is now able to think in terms of God's compassion. And when he thinks of God's compassion, it moves him to verse 23 where it says, They are new yes. in the morning. Thank God for the gift of memory. Yes. Praise his name. Amen. For the gift of memory is a blessing from God. He he remembered God. He remembered God. It's good to be able to remember God. Yes. Where he brought you from and where he's taking you to. Remember yes. God. Yes. The, the message translation says, but there's one thing I remember. And remember, I keep a grip on hope. I catch a hope of hope. Jeremiah describes the posture of hope in verse 21 through the lens of remembering God. Mm. That's what I heard in the testimony. Amen. That's hope because of that remembrance of what God had done in the past. That's right. Amen. And that, that brings him hope for his things when I thought about it, when I thought about the situation. I have hope. Amen. The moment of a deeper despair, and as he recalled his bitter afflictions, a remarkable transition mm. amen, in his attitude take place. Amen. His hopelessness is expressed in verses 18 through 20. Yeah. But then he suddenly turned to hope as he remembered God. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hope in verse 21 means to wait in place. I'll say that again. Hope in verse 21 means to wait in place or to stay in one place yes. and anticipate or expect something. Yes. That's yes. what I heard today. Yes. Amen. Yes. You have hope and God is telling you to stay in one place. Yes. Stay in your posture yeah. of prayer. Yes. Stay in your posture yeah. of praise. Yes. Stay in your posture of worshiping the only true and living God. Yes. And with that, if you stay in your place or wait in your place, you have anticipation or you can expect something to happen. My God. Is anybody here that expects something to happen? Now the word expresses the idea of hopefully waiting. I'm not waiting impatiently. I'm hopefully 
Amen. Waited. Yes. Second thing that I see here in the text, God's mercy and compassion brings hope in verse 22. Yes. He said, through the Lord's mercy, we are not consumed because his compassion fails yes. now. Yes. Now hope is not wishful thinking, but confident expectation in the Lord. Yes. I have expectation that the Lord is going to do something far beyond what you see today yes. in the life of faith, gospel, fellowship. Yes. That's my hopeful expectation. Amen. Now, the verb hope, I said, suggests an attitude of waiting attitude. I wait, but I don't wait in this fact. Mm. I wait hoping That's and right. knowing that God is going to bring a transition. That's right. Nothing in there, you see, simply have to wait for God to take care of the situation. Nothing is too big for God. I'm going to say it again. Nothing is too big for God. No matter what situation that you're going through, God is bigger and will take care of the situation. Thank you, Lord. Have no financial burden you face. That's bigger than God. Yes. Can I get a witness here? Amen. I can look back in the Old Testament. The children of Israel thought they were they were in a hopeless situation. Amen. When they thought they were trapped in the Red Sea. Jonah thought he was in a hopeless situation when he was in the belly of the fish. Yes. Daniel in the lion's den yeah. thought he was in a hopeless situation. Yeah. The three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, were thrown into the fire furnace. They thought they were in a hopeless God, situation. God. Yeah, yeah. Mary and Martha, when the brother of yeah. Ephraim had been dead for three days, yeah. thought they were in a hopeless situation. All of them thought that they were in a hopeless situation. Yeah. Help me somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and look what God did. Amen. And, and God time and time again allowed himself to be bigger than what they faced. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I want to put in your spirit today. That God is bigger than what you face. Bigger. Yeah. Amen. It doesn't matter if you have a large membership or small membership. Remember, God is bigger, bigger. in the situation. Yes. The lane is yours because God is bigger yes. than the situation. Yes. And income is coming to build the future sanctuary yes. because God is bigger, bigger. Yes. than the situation. Yes. Come on, shout, God is bigger yes. than the situation. Yes. But then in verse 22, he, he says, through the Lord's mercy, we're not consumed because the compassion fail not. God's mercy keep on showing up. Yes. Just when they need it. Amen. And then, and then in verse 23, he said, They are faith, they are new every morning. Great is your faith. And God's mercy moves to God's faithfulness. My God. Help me somebody. Amen. Now, because the Lord's faithful mercies, and compassion to you every morning, yeah. we have hope. Right. Come on and shout, we have hope. We yeah. have hope. Now I'm going to get down to verse 24 where I want to be for a few minutes. It talks about his resolve brings hope. Listen what verse 24 says. It's a very important verse. The Lord is my portion. Saves my soul. Yes. Help me somebody. Yes. His soul is talking. His, his inner spirit is talking. His inner being is talking. He's not talking, Pastor Melcher, out of emotions, but it said, The Lord is my portion. Yes. Saves my soul. Yes. When he needed someone to be a witness, his soul speaks up. My God. Help me somebody. And therefore, he says, I hope in him. Now, the Lord is my portion, my lot in life. That's what he's saying. The Lord is my portion. He's my lot in life. 
Amen. Uh -huh. I said earlier that one translation said, I'm, I'm sticking with God. For he's all I got left. Yes. Help me here. Yes. God is my everything. Yes. Say everything. Everything. Yes, hope is confident expectation of good. Not bad, but good. Hope is the anticipation of victory even in the face of defeat. Yes. Now maybe not down. But I have hope I'm getting up. Hope. Are y'all gonna help me here? Hope is the fuel that takes us from the day into tomorrow. Yes. Hope is that sentiment that, that that ties the future just as memory ties to the past. Yes. I think I said something. I said hope points to the future, but memory brings the past into the present. Yes. Sometimes all we need in life's dilemma is just a little bit of hope. Say a little bit of hope. A little bit of hope. Sometimes when the tunnels is dark, all we need is just a little bit of hope. Sometimes when troubles are lasting too long, all we need is just a little bit of hope. A little bit of hope. Sometimes when the road is is, is rocky and the way is weary. All we need is just a little bit of hope. Yeah. And sometimes when you don't know how you're going to pay the rent for the building and money is strange and paycheck is, is low, all we need is just a little bit of hope. Yeah. And sometimes when the jobs are gone and the rent is due on the building, all we need is just a little bit of hope. Yeah. Sometimes when you're doing your best and you're still failing to test, all you need is a little bit of hope. Yeah. I have hope. Hope is a powerful word. Shout hope. Hope. No matter what comes, I have hope. Hope does not back up. Hope does not back down. Hope does not back out. Hope does not back in. Hope does not cave in. Hope does not quit. Hope does not bow. Hope does not cave in. Hope does not drop out. Hope does not run out. Hope does not give in. Hope does not give out. Hope does not give up. But let me tell you what hope will do. Hope looks up. Hope up. Hope measures of hope, buckles of hope, suits of hope, shapes of hope, walls of hope, rises up. Let the church say amen. Hope believe that there's a sun even when it's not shining. I feel like preaching now. Hope believes in love even when you don't feel it. Hope believes in God even when God is silent. Hope sees the invisible. Hope, amen, believes the incredible. Hope approaches the unapproachable. Hope endures the unknowable. Hope beats the unbeatable. And hope defeats the undefeatable. I have hope. That's what I have. I think I ran through the list of every member in here, every soldier in here, every believer in here have experienced one of these. But I still have hope. What about you, huh? I have hope today. Can anybody agree with me? Somebody touch and agree. I have hope. I have hope. For faith, gospel, fellowship. Yeah, yeah. It is the high rise. 
building that what they call the Hartford Project. Uh -huh. But back in 1989, the city of Providence, Rhode Island, tried to demolish that building. Praise his name. Yes. Right. Police came and blocked off the streets and around the building. Demolition experts and squads and crew came with cranes and tractors and and they deployed in the area. Dynamite was brought in. My God. And they placed in the buildings. Uh, and the experts prepared to explode the building. Mm. Help me somebody. All right. But the building would not come down. My God. The awesome person. All right. Amen. It would not come down. The building would not budge. And finally, uh -huh. the demolition experts packed up the gear. They, they moved the tractors, they moved the plane, and they said, wow. we can't do nothing with this building. Yeah. Dynamite couldn't destroy it. Right. Well, today, in 2023, the building is still standing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see the picture? Right. Because hope cannot be defeated. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I forgot to tell you something about the story. You see, uh, the state of Rhode Island in, embedded in the flag is the word hope. Yes. Help me somebody. Yes. And that hope is like that building that say, do what you want. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not going to move. Yeah. Hope say, throw everything you have at me. But I'm not even going to shake. Yeah. Amen. And say, bring in your expert destroyer. And I will still be here long after we're going home. Oh. Just like a tree yeah. planted by the rivers of waters. Yeah. I shall not move. Yeah. Shall hold. Yeah. I shall hold yeah. for faith and gospel fellowship. Yeah. Am I the only one in here? Yeah. Come on, say, I shall hold, yeah. hold for faith and gospel fellowship. What's yeah. happening? Jesus is our hope. No matter what's going on, no matter what's going now, no matter who leads the ministry, who comes, hope is in Jesus for eternal future. Can I prove it? Prove it, man of God. Verse 26 said, It is good. It's good. It's good. I feel like preaching that. It's good that one should have hope. And wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. I said it's good that you have hope. And just keep on waiting for the salvation of the Lord. This word salvation is deliverance from sin. And its consequences brought about by faith in Jesus Christ. Salvation is a message of hope. Yeah. Yeah. Stories of hope fill the pages of the Bible. But there's one story that outlasts all of them. That shows hope is not a joke. Hope is not a gimmick. Hope is not something going to leave you standing. And that story is in Luke 24. Six. He is he not here. Yes. But he's risen. Yes. If you want to see hope, read that verse. Yes. Amen. He is not here. But it's risen. Don't have a witness yet. Yes. I stopped by to tell you on my way uh, to Dallas City in Cataclysm that, that hope hinges around Calvary. Yes. All of human history culminated at a place called Calvary. Yes. The entire universe focused its uh, attention on that piece of ground near, near a small hill. Shaped as a skull outside the city walls of Jerusalem. My God. Help me, Holy Ghost. And that man, Roman soldiers were driving nails in his hands and yes. feet, uh, um, uh, nails in his feet uh, of the man uh, called Jesus now. Yes. And he had the blow of a hammer struck on the nail, wrenched across the spans of the universe. Yeah, a 
and richer say in the heaven. God the Father watched her from the balcony, the balcony of glory. As his only begotten son was executed by sinful men. And Jesus himself could have stopped the executioner. Yes. God the Father could have called out legions of angels yes. and stopped it all. But I'm glad, I said I'm glad, so glad. that the prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah 53, he was wounded yes. for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. Oh, yes. And the chastisement of a peace was upon him. Yes. And with the stripes we are healed. Yes. All like sheep have gone away and have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord, I said the Lord, have laid on him the iniquity of them all. And people came by, looked at him and mocked him and dared him to come down from the cross. His disciples ran away and hid in a dark closed room in the city to call fear. They lost all hope. And then darkness covered the earth. The curtains of the temple ripped upon from top to bottom. The earth shook. The rock split. And Jesus cried, it is finished. And he bowed his head. And he died. I said he bowed his head. And he died. He was dead. And when he died, all hope was now gone. Say yeah. They sealed the tomb. One day passed. Another happened. Two days went by. And nothing happened. But then on the third day, when hope of Israel, of all humanity, seemed to be completed and shattered. Yeah. Philippians 